The driving question of this video is definitely, are the features that you get with a nicer welder worth it, or would you rather have, you know, 10 cheap Amazon welders? To help me decide, I'm gonna be ranking each of these by these factors. Price, machine capabilities, accuracy to those said capabilities, accessories, and of course, how they weld. If you couldn't tell by now, all of these are DC stick welders. I have them laid out in price and we've got the very cheapest War King, I'm gonna be calling it the King, $85, $100 Yes Welder, $150 Art Captain, $320 Titanium, and yes, the $850 ESOB. Don't forget, most of them actually go on sale, except for the ESOB. Titanium from Harbor Freight, you know it, they always have sales. And these three I did pick up from Amazon and each of them do have a digital coupon right now. So they're even cheaper. I'm gonna be ranking each of these against each other on a scale of one to five. One being the lowest, and at the end, we'll combine all the points and see who's out on top. Now you might be like me and love finding a good deal, so I actually, for the price category, gave the king the five and the ESOB gets the one. For the machine capabilities, I am going to be doing a couple different categories. One is the max listed amperage, one for the lowest amperage, and then the actual true amperage, because as you can guess it, you know a machine could really claim whatever it wants to, but is that what it actually puts out? For the listed max amperage, you've got 140, 160, 180, 200, and 225. Now it is nice to have a machine that can go low. That allows you to do thinner material with stick welding. So uh, the king can only go as low as 50, not that low. Uh, yes welder's 20, the ESOB is 10. Our captain's back up to 20 and then 15 for the titanium. After the first three rounds, the titanium is on top with the R captain right behind it. Tied for third is ESOB and Yes Welder. And coming in at last is the King. Now let's test those amperages out to see if it really is what they claim. I started out with the King and holy cow, it was hot. Take note that the digital skill is at 20 and it is well above that. Now, when I did do the max amperage for it, which is 140, it was actually really close along that scale. So here's what I did for each of them. I took readings down at the low end at 75 amps and then at the max for each one. Then I got the percent difference for each of those and well, here's how it came out. The low end was the king at 66% accuracy. Then next up was Yes Welder, Art Captain, Titanium, and with a 91% accuracy was the ESOB. I was going to do duty cycles, but there's not enough listed information. You know, for example, the, the King, it actually doesn't even list one. For your Yes Welder and Art Captain, it says 60%, but that's 60% of what? I highly doubt that's of the max amperage. Now, I honestly don't care that much about duty cycles, and that's because even, you know, here in my garage, I've done some fairly large projects, and I think I've only hit, you know, the overload, you know, the duty cycles like once or twice. Now, I would say if you do hit that a bunch, you know, or you are welding a ton, you should probably upsize your machine. Half these machines came with, you know, face shields and the really cheap chipping hammers. You know what, if they came with that, I'll give it a gold star. Okay, the King was the only one that actually came with a case, so, you know, even though it's about as thick as a lunchbox, I'll give it one extra point. But what I do care about are, you know, the power cord, the length, size, the ground clamp, and the electro holder. I am gonna split it up into two, one being the quality of the ground clamp and electro holder, and then the length of the leads themselves. The King got the lowest score for the ground clamp and electro holder. Now, I'm not gonna spend too much time on the ground clamps because you'll notice they are almost identical all within each other. Now, there is, you know, the ESOB does have a slightly larger spring and pin, and a lug as well, but in general, they are pretty much all identical. Now, I did have high hopes for the Electro Holder. You know, it, it did look like it was one of the nicer, uh, beefier ones, but seriously, this is like the thinnest tubing plastic. Um, I have a feeling if I drop it, it's gonna break, but I'm not too surprised coming out of the cheapest welder out of the bunch. 
Number two goes to Titanium, and three is our Captain. Now, I did think they actually had the same Electro holder, but pulling them out and actually comparing them side by side, they're a bit different. The Titanium is smaller. Um, I mean, come on, Titanium. You're one of the most expensive welders, and you throw in the cheapest type of Electro holder. Yeah, well, that's why it's got number two, and then not that much better is the Arc Captain. Now, something that's kind of surprising is I've recently tested the Arc Captain MiG-200, and it came with an awesome electro holder, one of the best I've seen. So, I mean, I would say, hey, you're already halfway there, throw in the nicer one with the dedicated stick welder. Looking at these two, you might think they're the same as well. Just like last time, at first glance, I thought the Yes Welder and the ESOP have the same, but putting them up against each other, they're not. The, ESOP, or the Yes Welder is lighter, you know, just not as heavy duty. Still is, you know, second best. And, you know, the, the ESOP takes the cake. It's got a nice heavy duty electro holder. Now, actually looking at the pictures online, it looks like they're including, you know, a curved handle Tweeko one. So regardless, if you pick up a new one or if you get one of the older ones, uh, if it comes with the new Tweeko, it's going to be better than any of these anyway. So yes, the ESOP comes out on top with the electro holders and ground clamps. All of these are 110 or 220 volt power. Now, how the cord actually ends, the uh, King and the Captain end in a 110 volt uh, plug, and then Yes Welder, Titanium, and ESOB have the 220 plug, and the adapters obviously accordingly. Now, as far as the lead length, I'm actually going to be including the power cord length, and that's because these four, uh, the ground clamp and electro holder, all had 10 foot each lead, so it would be kind of a wash. Total length, including the power cord, you've got 18 feet for the uh, King, 25 feet for the Yes Welder, 26 for the Arc Captain, yes, just barely beats out the Yes Welder, 28 feet for the Titanium, and 30 total feet for the ESOB. Warranties are as follows, 30 day, 90 day, one year, two year, and three year. Yes, Arc and Titanium are right about the same and the ESOB is starting to pull away. Now there are a bunch of different features on some of these machines. So what I did was I pretty much gave one point for each feature the machine comes with. Down at the bottom, you'll see titanium. Why is that? Well, at first glance, I actually thought it had a couple switches and stuff. It doesn't. The one switch it has, other than the knob to control your amperage, was just to designate whether it was 110 or 220 volt. I docked it for that because all of the others are self-regulated. You don't have to switch it, or you don't have to switch it yourself. You plug it in, whatever power you have, and it goes. So titanium, you're down at the bottom for the least amount of features. Then the Art King, which really only has one, your amperage control. And then bumping it up from there, you got the Yes Welder and Art Captain. They've got some nice features in there to be able to control your hot start and your arc force. Uh, you can also control your uh, electro sizes. And then the ESOB, as you would expect, should have the most amount of features. And it does. It's got added 6010 features, and it does even have a plug for TIG welding. Now, I didn't really put that much weight on TIG welding type stuff, just because all of these machines can TIG weld. And we're not going to get into the TIG welding side of stuff. We just want to stick with the stick welding. Stick with stick welding. So even without the TIG control setting added in, it still did have the most amount of features. Now the actual welding side. You know, it, this is a little personal preference, but I did try to use some parameters that, to help me actually judge them. For example, if it took a couple extra strikes to get it going, um, I factored in going back to uh, the actual true amperage that the machine says. For example, the Arc King is like super hot, so I had to keep turning it down and adjusting it till I was able to get a good consistent weld bead. If you're having to mess around with the machine to dial down your settings a lot, that takes time, effort, you're wasting a bunch of scraps. So, you know, just to pick up a machine and have it be the true amperage and uh, go off some charts or whatever, put a nice bead right off the bat, that does help considerably. So, this is how it all turned out. The Art King is down at the bottom. The Art Captain and Yes Welder were very similar. I wonder if there's some same components on the inside since they are almost identical in size as well. Either way, I did choose the Art Captain just barely over the Yes Welder. Titanium, I didn't have any issues. It welded awesome. And as you guessed it, no issues with the ESOB. It's something that you can just go pick the amperage, have at it, and you'll pretty much get a good weld every time. Looking at the numbers and table, it wasn't really that big of a surprise that the ESOB ended up on top. 
Now, I was kind of surprised that, you know, the Ark Captain and Yes Welder did um, fairly better than the Titanium. But in the end, you know what? All of these categories and factors have the same weight. This might not apply to you. So for example, if you know price is a big deal, maybe three, four times the value of that category and see how it turns out. Guess what? The ESOB's not on top anymore. So take these numbers, you know, and play around with them. Figure out what works best for you, and hopefully the video does give you an idea of different categories, features, and stuff that I look at when I'm searching out for a welder. Like, subscribe, and hey, you know what? Leave a comment. Maybe you already have a welder that has some features that we didn't talk about. That's all I got for this one. Thanks for watching. See you next time.